I would like to first uh, thank the uh, three organizers, uh, Atelia, Hadi, and uh, Kiron for inviting me. This is the second workshop uh, Kiron and Atelia organized so in, in the theory of the DRT. It's a very uh, great opportunity. So what I'm going to uh, talk with you about is hybrid functionals and optimized effective potentials. So uh, in the uh, previous talk that you have listened to, uh, uh, Professor uh, Zhong that you have given talks on GTA and uh, meta GTAs. So those are functional that are semi-local, that depend on uh, electron density and maybe density metrics only on the division in the, in the meta GTA case. But in, in the GTA case, it's just the electron density and the gradient of electron density. That, that's uh, one class of functional, semi-local type functional. So uh, it is possible also to describe the exchange correlation energy in terms of the entire uh, set of orbitals, the constant orbitals. And that's, uh, that will lead to hybrid and range separate functionals that offer a very interesting possibility uh, for, for better accuracy. Of course, it's more complicated. So I'm going to tell you about the, this type of functionals as well as the computation associated with this type of functionals. So, um, so the, the theoretical uh, foundation to think about hybrid functional is the adiabatic connection. Professor Levy. Tomorrow I'm deriving. Oh, you're not you're not thinking? I'm deriving. Oh, I thought you were on the schedule. Yeah, giving yeah. a talk yesterday. Yeah, oh, okay. You'll do it tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to use what Professor Levy will derive tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it is uh, not that complicated. So what is a different connection? Is this very important connection between uh, non-interaction no interacting concept systems connect to the interacting electrons. So the interaction of course is Coulomb interaction and is one can pop out it is possible to include a coupling constant in terms of R12, um, Rj, and the number equal to zero, then you have a constant system with no interaction. The number equal to one is the physical uh, systems. But the very important connection that this number can change continuously, and the electron density as a function of lambda is constant equal to the electron density of the systems. So this lambda uh, is a changing parameter from 0 to 1, but uh, the electron density of the system, so you have one system and continuously many until you get the physical systems. Uh, so how do you keep the electron density constant for all different lambda? Then of course, you have to introduce a, a external potential and depend on lambda to compensate it, the changes because the, the, the interaction changes. So this needed to force this. So I'm not going to derive the result, but I'm going to use it. So the exchange correlation energy and the consequence of this is given by this formula. W. Yes. You went to roll the end. I know. As the the student typed my note, typed it into N. I used to use roll, but I probably roll is better. Yeah. Okay.
So this is the wave function that have this electron density or this electron density. Many body wave function because lambda is when lambda is non-zero, electron is tracking. And this is the two electron operator and minus the coulomb. So U here is the coulomb energy. So this is a uh, connection from many body theory to density functional theory with the exact intent correlation energy functional defined really very, very cleanly. Any question? <coughs> what is the source of this connection? Yeah. What is the the source? The, what is derived in other places, or is it a, a definition? Um, so you have the constant, which has the density from the non for the non interaction system, and it is equal to the physical system, the electron density, right? And so the, the, the electron for the interacting is density the set. So we know these two endpoints density are the set. And all, all I'm writing down this a direct connection is that to construct a continuous path from these two ends. These two days are the same, right? So the row, row zero here and row one is equal to row zero, right? So all we are doing is have a smooth differentiable connection, continuous connection. So there's many, many systems in between the constant connect to the physical systems. You may be not asking for the references. We were asking for the references. No, I, I think he answered me that you you denied that there will be a smooth path. No, okay. yeah. so you no, no, this is a, a, actually going to derive this model. Yeah. Okay. But it is an actually a, a, a <coughs> construction. There's no physics in in the passport. And it's possible to go to a different path. For example, th this is not this is a linear path, linear connecting the operator, right? You can think of other more interesting operator too. So this connection is a completely artificial construction. But it allows one to write down the exchange correlation energy in terms of many body wave function uh, development. Yes? Uh, for exchange correlation function, you define it as an equation for lambda and you new uh, lambda? Yes. Uh, but lambda has a discrete uh, value of 0 and 1. Continuous. It is continuous from 0 to Yes. <coughs> That's why this is connection. So this is a continuous connection. It's a continuous connection. Yes. And the continuous, the simplest continuous connection is a linear pathway. The linear coefficient in front of the electron interaction operator. Okay. Okay. So now we have this expression, and that look like really yes. So when you're saying that lambda is actually from zero to one. Yes. The exchange correlation function uh, W lambda that we define for all the lambda. Correct. Mm -hmm. By this expression, this is constant. This is independent lambda, yes. and this is dependent on lambda because the wave function in between is lambda dependent. And we would always have some good functions associated with the lambda. That's, that's the assumption, yes. But we have a wave function here, we have a wave function here, and we assume there is a wave function in between. So U also depends on lambda. You see me? U also depends on lambda? No, U is a, a, the Coulomb energy of the physical density, so it is independent of lambda. U is a constant. So it basically, is, is, you think about this is the Coulomb, the Coulomb operator, potential energy, right? And potential energy take away the, the Coulomb part, you left with exchange and correlation, but because the constant kinetic energy uh, has contribution to exchange correlation energy. So this coupling constant is really an incredibly smart way to, to, to include the kinetic energy contribution to the exchange correlation energy. So that's the Coulomb energy one would get for lambda equal to one. Uh, Coulomb energy is just depending on density, and the density is the same for the entire pathway. 
Right. So it's independent from one. Right. So so this formula has um is the foundation for the uh, the, the next thing that we think about when we want to try to approximate the same correlation function now using this formula. So let's look at the interesting point. When lambda equals to zero, what is this? U P minus one zero. And and uh, just uh, yeah. Five zero. Five uh, zero. Very good. Yes. Well, okay. Let me very quickly. Yes. So that's the expression. And what is five zero? That's right. The determinant. So that's the constant determinant. Constant determinant evaluated in this electron electron operator minus the Coulomb energy from the same determinant. What is it? Is that the exchange energy? Yes. So this is just the exchange energy. That's the exchange energy from the Hutchie Fock theory. Right. And uh, we can write down this in terms of half of This is the normal partial for equation for exchange integrals. And this okay, see what I did slope. That's high. So the slope is also known. The slope of the function evaluate at the adiabatic connection, the beginning adiabatic connection, divided with respect to lambda. That's also a known quantity. And this was um, derived by um, Mel Levy and Gurdon and Dre Gurdon. The second order perturbation theory uh, the correlation energy in the Gerling Levy second order perturbation theory, and that's how uh, Mel will give the four derivations for. So the slope is given in a like MP2 like fashion, very similar to MP2, but different uh, expression. So the slope is known, the initial value is known, and um, then, then, of course, then we don't know much of the rest of the curve. The rest of the lambda behavior for this stuff. It is uh, it is still a, in terms of exact one, uh, and as you do exact many body theory, we don't have. But these two information, two pieces of information, is exactly known. The zero, the beginning point, and the end point. So the um, so the one. Uh, Really, the development of the hybrid function or the breakthrough that led by uh, Axel Becker. So, so this hybrid function is. So just uh, assume that the curve is a linear curve. Assume the curve 
So the curve is not really linear, but approximation. So this is a black hole. <coughs> JCP. <laughs> Make this assumption first, and then uh, this is a second order perturbation uh, formula, so involving unoccupied orbitals as well as occupied orbitals and also all the orbital elements. So it's a lot more complicated than and normally what you want for a function. This has a lot more uh, dependence. And comp computation will be more expensive and also more complicated. So, so what Becca used is these two pieces of information. So this is functional called B half and half. So assume that we know the endpoint at lambda equal to 1, the W value for lambda equal to 1, which we don't because it involves the two many body wave function at lambda equal to 1. So, uh, but lambda equal to 0 is known. So this has a change in there. Right? This is have the, uh, and that half, half is a mixture of half. So what, what is this is that if you know the end of the adequate connection, not that zero, not that equal to one, and you draw a line, the area integration gives you this formula. It, uh, the simplest rule, trapezoidal rule for integration, gives you half half function. So, th so then we have half of Hutchinson functional and half of something that we don't know. The name of the approximation is the following. Using a density functional approximation to approximate the lambda equal to 1. So it's the density functional approximation to the, this expression at lambda equal to 1. So then you have a function density DRT plus a exchange. And the proportion is 50 50 percent. And that's what they call B half half. It's still a useful functional, it has some good features. The, uh, the practical application of this idea can uh, can be this uh, using the yes. I have one question regarding yes. the, the slope of the line. Yes. In this case, would it be negative? Because uh, does it matter how the slope of the line is? The slope is negative. Yeah. Then correlation energy is negative. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can I ask this? Yes. I'm a bit confused about where the arc is from. Yeah. Um, what the source comes from? Is it is the constant orbital, right? Okay. Yeah, but they, they, it's, the functional expression is identical to Hutchinson fock expression. Okay. The orbital are the constant orbitals, okay. right? So the functional is Hutchinson fock functional. Okay. It's that the orbital are constant orbitals. Very good question. Any other questions? No. All right. So the, 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 this functional was very useful, very interesting, but not really uh, a systematic improvement compared to GGA and LGA. So the next idea came with, well, instead of, uh, we, so from this analysis, we can see that the Hachi fork expression for exchange should play a role in the functional construction because it is the beginning of this point. This is the only piece of information you know exactly at this beginning of the line and we're not using it somehow. So the, uh, the critical uh, idea came to say, well, just putting a fraction of Hachi fork and then let the parameter fitting decide what the percentage of Hachi fork should be. 
instead of 30%. And that's the, uh, that's the popular functional of P3 LYP. It has the Twenty percent instead of forty percent, and then eighty percent of LDA change. So it has 20% uh, hardship fault, 80% LDA exchange, that's, and then have a 0.72 beta ADA exchange, plus 0.01 correlation, LYP correlation, and 0.18 from 5. So the coefficients are fixed. So it has um, Maybe I have a mistake here. I have to check. I, 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 I might note it. This was a note I have to check carefully. So the coefficient maybe I'll, I'll provide you later on. What is the amount of coefficients? It looks like some problem. <coughs> but anyway, so it's a mixture of different, um, um, most important, has a 20% hardship fork and then a mixture of different uh, exchange by LDA GGA for correlation and change. Okay, so the, the, the consequence of this introduction of the Hashi fork functional really uh, enhance the accuracy in a very dramatic way. So, so if we look at it then, um, Keto formation. Keto formation data for a set of molecules. And so LDA and then the error, okay. Take functional optimization DFA. LDA, the error will be about 20 to 30 kilocalories more. That's the error of LDA. CGA will be about 10 to 15 kilocalories more. So what will be the meta CGA scale? Um, So it's matching the hybrid. The hybrid is a very close to the last coefficient there is 0.9. This one? Yeah. So it's 1 minus that 131. And also there's a delta missing before the EX EAT8 as it's just the extra. This one? No, no, the next one. Should be dealt with the next one. Yeah, that's, that's what I was... My, the note, the typo, you know. One that just won't be going like that. Everybody is aware of this too, but that yeah. looks like a minus sign between rather than equal sign. Ah, yeah. Yeah. this one? Yeah, it's equal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. May I ask one more question about uh, that lambda? Of course. So the VE, so the electron electron interaction here is lambda by RIJ. Yes. Right. So in that case, so VE should depend on lambda. No, VE itself is that's the electron operator in the physical system. Lambda is what multiplies the mm -hmm. of the VE. Uh, 
but V you write V E as lambda by R I J, right? Correct. So then V E should depend on lambda. Should not depend on lambda. No. Lambda is what we multiply in front of we also this is not V okay. I I just skip the summation sign here, right? Oh so that's lambda V E. Yes. So then you should not depend on lambda. Okay, that's that on lambda. Yes. I'll just give the coefficients by fitting the fitting that. Fitting that. The difference between BACA ADA change and the LDA search. So CGA always have the LDA factor and then have an enhancement factor. So then, uh, actually, the algebraic connection thinking uh, is a very fruitful, fruitful way to think about functional constructions. Uh, I want to tell let's be your hybrid. So the young hybrid, uh, the first type of young hybrid functional is very separate. And separation. This is an error function, and this complementary error function. These two functions are to equal to one. So this is identity, but so you separate column into a, a short range and a long range one. And this separation, you can you can do the uh, interesting trick of including part directly and hybrid with part of the exchange and part of the long range or part of the short range, and that allows you different possibilities. So this range separation uh, also, uh, you know, here from uh, Professor Koenig, uh, the how to, it's possible to change the parameter, tune the parameter to get better functionals. Uh, so it has lots of uh, possibility along this adiabatic connection and along the range separations. Uh, one of the uh, very useful functionals is uh, Long range corrected one. Corrected the long range, including long range hard three force and short range DFT. So long range corrected functional or LC. And LC you can do LC, LDA, CCA, and many things. So including 100 percent of long range hard uh, fork, short range that's using DFT functionals. So these are interesting functional. And then there's a different version. Uh, so this is long range half tree fork. Long range half tree fork. And then there's also a different version, short range half tree fork. You can include the short range half tree fork and long range half tree fork. There are different reasons for that. And, and that's represented by two functional. One is called MLDA, modify LDA, and developed by uh, Kleinman. And then one of the very popular ones is HSE from the school Springer's group, and that's a it is a short range Hartree fork and long range uh, GGA type functional. So, so okay, I cannot use this now, right? So I have to come back to erase this side. This is really what good way. I could be raised. Another one, so range sep range separation is one. Another one is how uh, build an explicit approximation to lambda. So approximation. 
in sort of model, we said a linear model, we can construct different models to, to do this. And the first uh, first uh, approximation that was very interesting was the uh, work from uh, John Perdue and his co-workers using this information, using zero, 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 derivative at zero, and then at infinity, derivative at infinity. And the infinity, lambda infinity, is, is uh, strongly correlated with the uh, imaginary or Yasson Yasson infection is extremely strong. And but you still have to maintain the same uh, external uh, same Yasson density. So you have to model modify your external potential with lambda V enormously to accommodate this. So this using these four pieces of information, uh, uh, then you can sort the model, it was very useful. Another approximation, so this is from your book. From my book, uh, from um, Maury Sanchez. We had a function now that was like this. Using a, a Hadley approximation, constant plus a dependence on lambda, and it's kind of a very good approximation to the true curve. Now it's not being uh, more complicated, and uh, the information we used was we used the lambda equal to zero law information. We used an approximate derivative at zero. And then we use what well, approximate information, much like the hybrid function. So these three pieces of information determine A, B, C. So you got physics. And and actually the function now is uh, is very similar to hybrid performance, right? Very similar to hybrid but a factor for reaction barrier. So this is the NCY functional was as accurate as the period, but more accurate in many other areas except in barrier, reaction barrier, it's much better than this unit for chemical reaction barrier. So yes? So yeah, what are the three conditions that we use to calculate the this one will not be that in the change. This one is a derivative at zero. That will be given by the perturbation theory, but we don't want that. We use a functional approximation for this one. Okay. And then at one, at one, lambda equal to one. We use another functional approximation. So using DRT approximation, we have the value of lambda equal to lambda equal to one and slope at lambda equal to one. And using how to form exchange with this three pieces of information to tell me the three of physics. And then it is still a functional dependent on computational algorithm simply to hybrid. Okay. But it, it is it solves one interesting problem. Well, it is, so this function also is a uh, sub interaction free, it has no uh, when you have one reaction, this function will be that. One more thing, so this is one third one, actually I want to buy it. You can use also information from our market article to construct uh, and that is with of course with the oh, we already know the correlation energy from the second order activation theory. The 
this is the second order of the basic theory from MB2 of occurring living. The, the meaning is you will be according to Professor Levy's talk. They are different, but the expression wise is very simple. So I and J are occupied orbital, A and B are unoccupied orbital. Occupied orbital energy and occupied orbital energy is a two electron integral with Coulomb in its charge. So this is a ingredient because this is a slope, the second the slope of second order. So you naturally one can include this type of uh, functional, this dependence on occupied orbital to construct functions and will lead to better accuracy. So so um, there are functional that use this information, use exact exchange, use this information, but this is called double hybrid. Double hybrid. Also use a similar idea of fitting the coefficients between uh, between different pieces of functionals and then uh, uh, and these two actually better accurate than hybrid. So the two uh, hopes that they pursue this uh, one is uh, Primas, and uh, the other is uh, Professor Xu Xi from China and Bill Barter. So they, they both have uh, different versions of double hybrid functionals. That the, that the, the accuracy would be maybe two to three on this scale. Then the last one that using a locking orbital that is a very popular functional of well, much of interest in current interest is random trace approximations. So, uh, Kilo, uh, uh, the discussion on random trace approximation already being carried out? No. But I mean, I think you want to talk about random trace approximation right now? You talk about our research. Yeah, oh, okay. So, then the, so the next is this RPA. Random approximation, and you are here from uh, Professor Adrian Lewinsky in, in her research talk. Use, use, instead of just second order perturbation, you can sum the perturbation, partial summation of perturbation theory to infinity, that is the uh, random version approximation. Or maybe I will talk about that in my research talk to the different version of RPA, the particle particle. So you can sum this type, sum partial summations with different, uh, different partial sum. Correct. So these are kind of functional going beyond semi-local functional hybrid with uh, with an occupied orbital. And so the next topic is um, how do we carry out a DRT calculation? Right? And we'll focus on the, uh, this type of functional for now. This has exchange, it has function, this exchange, how to form exchange depending on orbitals, occupied orbitals. And this is your normal DFT. So how do you carry out minimization? You want to the ground state, you have the functional, you have to find the minimum to get your, your energy, right? So There are two ways to do these calculations. So the Hashifog functional is a functional occupied orbital, but also can be more compactly expressed in terms of functional of the density matrix. Can you follow me on this? No? Even though it is expressed in terms of orbitals, it can be expressed in terms of this fraction. And then the first order is the matrix.
the, the diagonal part is electron density uh, of diagonal, so the density matrix So there's some over all the occupy of it. So if you look at how to form this expression, it can be expressed in terms of density matrix. So, so it is important that it be, uh, the function now that depends on density matrix instead of depending on the orbital, because orbital, occupy orbital has a uh, has a dependence. The energy is independent, independent of how the occupy orbital are uh, rearranged. You can make a linear combination of occupy orbital and your know, energy is unchanged, but your know, functional look look uh, different if your functional is not dependent on density matrix. But if your functional depends on density matrix, then it's invariant. You can rotate in the occupied space and you still get the same uh, same energy. So so let's focus on for a moment this type of functional. So it's easier than the MP2 or curling V for the very same set order or RPA. Just how to form the change. So now we have this expression and or in more general you you have this set of orbital, occupy orbital and energy and then uh, and then of course you can you can include a, a more general one who could would be A sigma and then A sigma and occupy occupy as well. So that would be more complicated. But they all have the same challenge is how do we carry out the calculation of finding the minimum. They are, while they explicitly express in terms of density matrix, of the constant density matrix, they are still density functional. They are implicit density functional. So this concept of implicit, implicit density functional, functional because the, the uh, one body potential determining the density, density determining everything, and of course density also determines the density matrix. So it is implicit, not explicit. But one way is that we, we carry out yes. Sorry. Uh, which one is implicit? Both of them or just one of them? Both. Both. Both are implicit. Both are implicit functional of density. Okay. So, so there are two ways to carry out the minimization with this implicit functional. One is to follow the uh, constant equation. That's the constant equation, and you find this V. Okay? We don't know, we have not specified what is a V yet. It's a local potential. Thank you. The other one is what I'll talk later on. But first, what is this V? This V, V of, is a one particle potential that gives you the electron density. And the, the, the give you electron density matrix in an implicit way. So the potential is the one particle potential. So what we really want is the following. We want the minimum of energy equal to the minimum of this energy functional. Oops. 
So the total energy cost can be expressed in terms of the first order density matrix. The kinetic energy, the Coulomb, kinetic energy is given by the first order density matrix. The Coulomb energy is given by the diagonal of the density matrix, that's Coulomb energy. When you change forces in terms of density matrix, so one can express the uh, energy, the total energy, as an explicit functional of the density matrix, but the implicit functional of density. And we minimize this with respect to what? Well, can I see? Density. I cannot hear you. Density. Yes. Well, you, you, you want to minimize with respect to density, but density is not your explicit variables. And the most simple way is to minimize with respect to this. Right? Because this gives you the electron density. The, this potential defined this way gives you electron density directly. If you define in terms of density, and then also give you orbital and give you the density matrix. So you minimize respect to the potential is the most straightforward to think about. Minimize this potential. This, and this potential, the minimum of this potential, the minimizer is called the optimized effective potential. OEP. So it may look quite complicated. You will have to, to do many, many constant calculations with different trial potential. 45 minutes. OK, so let me go to the But we have questions. Do we have Yes. Um, just because the point is about quotient differential, the potential is quotient differential does not depend on the spin. It does, it does. The potential, well, the constant potential can have two components, one for spin up and one for spin down. Yeah, but finally for... Uh, okay. Right. I'm running out of time, but it is an important topic. But then when you minimize it uh, through the potential, it's total potential. Yes. Yes. Okay. So so the so what can define the OEP? So OEP can be defined by total energy. This is Lagrangian equation. You take the functional derivative of energy expression with respect to the potential, set equal to zero. That's the necessary condition for minimum. And that's the equation. You can divide the OEP equation. And of course, it, it, what do you will do? You sum over orbital, divide energy with respect to orbital. Using a chain rule, functional differentiation. You want to differentiate respect to this, but your variable is in terms of orbital. So you differentiate with respect to orbital first, integrate over the orbital derivative with respect to the potential. So this one is given by the functional. Whatever functional is in terms of orbital, you can do the differentiation. This one is by first order perturbation theory. Look at this equation. The first order perturbation theory of this equation gives you this theory. So you can write down the equation exactly. Complicated. It's not easy to solve, but it can be done. You can write down the equation. So practically, there are uh, ways to solve this without... Uh, this, is, this is a differential, integral differential equation. But practically, you have to discretize, right? Discretize this equation. And there are two ways to discretize this. One is uh, concurring and then bias group. They have expressed exchange correlation energy in terms of 
linear combination of basic section. And, and then put this in, derive the equation for the coefficients. Okay. There's another way. It's from um, my group. And it's me and my student. Um, is to express the entire potential, approximate the entire potential. So there's a difference. But this is two different ways of doing discretization. This discretization is only on the exchange correlation, so the Coulomb is using the Coulomb. This one is approximately a fixed potential. This is a reference fixed one. And explain the rest. And so, so it's, it looks very similar, but actually has diff completely different mathematics. When you take a discretization, the equations are different. And uh, uh, there's an analysis by, by us later on. Showing that the, uh, this is this is not linear discretization. This is linear discretization. Basically, it leads to uh, this is the, very much like LCA or linear combination or topological to solve the wave function problem. It's a linear discretization. This one leads to more complicated equation. All right. So practically, this is. Very good way to solve the OEP problem computationally. Okay, it's no longer a challenge. So I think it's doable, completely doable for anything you want to do. Now, one remark is that uh, since you are varying the potential here to minimize total energy, you have to be very careful with the accuracy, numerical accuracy or stability problem. Because if your wave function is not very good, when you expand your wave function, you have a very sort of low resolution of the wave function, then if your potential vary beyond that resolution of the wave function, we call that unbalanced. We always have to approximate wave function by basic set. And if you have a basic set that is, uh, that is for potential that is more refined than the wave function, those variations completely meaningless. Just think about it, if you do a discretization, you will function discretized on this size of grid. And if your potential is not discretized on this size of grid, discretized say half the size, then your wave function do not see the middle point of the wave function, right? Because it's just completely mismatch. Then you can do anything you want in the middle point for your work, for your potential, completely unfeasible. But if your wave function and potential discretization is compatible, there's no such issue. So just be, be careful with this. Uh, instability issue, but it is not it is solvable problem. Okay. The other we should stop right there so that people have time for questions. Okay, but what, what I wanted to try one more one more thing there. You do have a second lecture. It's not it's not on the same topic. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second the, well, I'm continuing is very quick. The second approach this OEP is one way and uh, we have coffee break too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the concept approach. The second approach, which is very important, it's a generalized concept. And one just minimizes the energy. With respect to the orbital directory. It's also a relative matrix, and you minimize with respect to the order orbital. Okay. If we have only Hachi fork, this will be exactly Hachi fork theory. Right? And if you have Hachi fork plus something, you will have a Hachi fork potential plus something else. So you will have a non-local constant potential or generalized constant potential. And this will be exactly, so this will be a solution. Which one, a quick question, which one is lower energy? They both can provide the same energy. Excuse me? 
Is they both can provide the same energy. No? They have the same energy function, no. You vary them in a different way. One is very with respect to this local potential, the other is very with respect to the orbital. And you lead to a no local potential. Yeah, but from the question, we see that if it's minimum with respect to orbitals, it's also a minimum with respect to potential. Yes. The, 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 this equation will get this. But apart from the constraint. Okay. One say the same. This one has low energy. There's another answer too, right? This one is low energy. So there's three answers. Okay. There will be a good question for coffee break discussion. Um, one, 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 one last thing is um, the when and these two both are get, get, give you very good result. In critical, critical application, they, are, they have, for physical observable, they have not differed in any significant way. They are different. I, I, I gave you the answer to this in like, my second lecture, if you were paying attention. <laughs> okay. Now, then, then the question, actually, since both give you similar physical answer, the question is, this is more complicated than OEP approach because it you have not to do this. This is easy. This is just how to, how to form equations. So when do you, because they give you similar answers, then when do you want to do OEP? Yeah. Excuse me? You always do the easy one. Um, there are cases that we don't know how to do the easier one. For example, yeah, basically you, you got the right philosophy, I completely agree with you. <laughs> but the case is when we cannot do the easier one. When the functional is more complicated than this, depending on, for example, the entire set of orbitals. There's still no known answer except the OEP approach to do the, mean, the minimization. But when, if it's just a functional of the density matrix, then this one, certainly. I'll stop here. Okay. Yeah, so if we look at OEP equation, yes. when it equals zero, we apply a chain rule. Yeah. And we see that the first term in the nth ground is a variation with respect to orbitals. Orbitals, right? This is the same condition as in a so no, we, no, because this is this chain rule. This this thing is not invertible. But the first the first term is the derivative. Yes. Yes, and if we solve from some the generalized from some equations, it equals zero. It means that O E P is also equal zero. Well, I I'm I'm, I'm I'm making a a really a sketch of this equation. Actually, this equation is not equal to zero. It's equal to a constraint because you have to put constraint. So when it is, so this term is, is not. Maybe what I should do is this. Yeah, it has a constraint in that. When you for the potential variation, there's no constraint. So this is true. For the Orbital variation, we have to constrain the orbital to be orthogonal to each other, so it's not equal to zero. Therefore, actually, this, 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 this equation does not lead to the OEP equation, no. But for example, if I apply both uh, methods to exact to Cartier form theory, yes. with the uh, correlation equal zero and I use exact exchange, mm -hmm. so. You will get two different energy. Two different energies. You do. Why well, do different methods? And yeah. Slightly different. Yeah, but um, uh, Cartier fog equations provide lower energies than OEP. Correct. That's the right so answer. Does it mean that if I will then include correlations and I would like to find the minimum, not with respect to density, but with respect to all orbitals, yeah. it will provide me lower energy. Low energy. Correct. So it means that this method. No, not necessarily, because 
basically what you're thinking is that we can use a reference, a pencil, uh, a reference consent or a general generalized reference. Reference consent means that the potential is local and generalized means that the potential is non-local. Both are non-interacting systems. Both give you a determinant. And they, they are different in, in energy, but that's not necessarily the lower one is better, no. But can I say then, so I found this from one method, but then I used orbital minimization, and I found another orbital, yeah. and then I just say, you. so this density, which construct from this orbital, and this density has lower energy than from another method. And then I can say that if I, 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 I need to find density which provides me um, lower energy. So in my argument is that this method should work better than not. I think um, it sounds plausible, but uh, um, it, it depends on how you evaluate the energy from that density. In the two cases, it's slightly different. So you can't make this direct connection. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it what is the skill was in this year? We need to find uh, as low a minimum as possible. Depends on how you define the boundary. Yeah. Boundary of what? Boundary of okay, basically the potential, whether it is a local potential or a non-local potential. I just found the boundary. It's called 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so let's thank White Tower again.